came from. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So it, it coincides with this because again, when he said, now put on the whole armor of God, nothing lacking. That means so our mind needs to be covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. So he says this, put on the whole armor that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes. Now, what I love about this particular passage, uh, the wisdom of God through the apostle, is he's talking from a militant standpoint. And, 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 and he says that you got to put on the whole armor that you can stand. That word stand is a military term, which means to hold your position. Yes. Yes. Uh, because there are going to be some situations in your life there are going to be some storms in your life that are designed from the enemy to try to shape your faith and your belief in God. But he's saying if you can put on the whole armor of God, it'll give you the ability to stand, to hold your position. So in other words, when the enemy comes in with unbelief and disbelief, because you have on the whole armor, you're able to stand and be unmovable and unshakable. When you can open up your mouth and be able to say, I shall not be moved. Because their song says, there's a storm out on life's ocean and it's headed this way. And if your soul is not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Uh -huh. So we've got to be anchored in Jesus. we got to be anchored in the Lord. Yes, sir. So he says, put on the whole armor that you're able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What are the wiles? The wiles are the chicanery and the tricks and the deception of the enemy. Yes, yes. The Bible says in another passage that we are not ignorant concerning the enemy's devices. Yes, yes. And we have got to make sure that we allow the spirit of discernment to be active in our lives like never before. So that we're able to discern and see the tactics of the enemy. Yes, sir how he's trying to detour you, how he's trying to dissuade you and get you off of focus from the things of God. But I'm here to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that there is no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And I want you to know that even in your season of warfare, that you shall be successful in God. Somebody say amen. Amen. Verse number 12 says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now here is revelation from the apostle. Because a lot of times we, we, we have battles in the kingdom amongst one another, amongst family members. But what we've got to understand is that your battle is not against a person, is what he's saying. It's not against an individual. He said it's not against flesh and blood. But your battle is spiritual. Yes. Uh -huh. And again, this is why you got when you understand your origin from whence you came, then you understand spiritual things. That the hand of the enemy, the devil is a spirit. Satan is a spirit. And what he does is he looks for a people that he can use so that he can get you out of position. Does that make sense? This is why he'll send people in your path to frustrate you, to make you angry, to aggravate you. And all it is is the chicanery of the ploy of the enemy so that he can get you off course. But when you understand that individual is not the person that you're up against, but you understand the spirit that is within the person, then you'll understand how to overcome your enemy. Uh, and then you'll understand that you have the power through Jesus Christ within you to bind the working of that spirit and let that spirit know that there is a king that lies within your belly and that you are 
able to shut down that devil and you are able to put that enemy in its place. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, because the Bible says if, if the gospel be here, it is here from them that are blinded. And so God is here to take off the blinders so that you can see in the realm of the spirit. So that you can see your enemy. So that you'll know how to deal with him. Yes. And he said, so, so he says, it's not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Mm -hmm. Principalities. If you break that word down, principalities, and you split it, prince. Uh -huh. Normally in, 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 in a kingdom, a prince is one that has a position of authority and power. Uh -huh. And so he's saying that there are ranks. Yes. of spiritual demons. There are ranks of spiritual powers that carry authority. So there is spiritual warfare that is happening above your head and around you every day. And, and, and this is why we got to be king in the spirit to be able to identify the spirit that is at work so that we can bind him and overthrow him. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So your battle is not physical, but your battle is spiritual. Uh, you know, when, uh, for instance, if you're fighting, you're fighting the spirit of infirmity. Infirmity is a spirit, it is a demon by the enemy that has been sent. And, and, and so when we go to the doctor or when we're not feeling good in our bodies, we must understand, guess what? That's a spirit. And, and a lot of times what we'll do is we'll take medicine. We'll, we'll take prescriptions that is given by the doctor. And that's fine in its place. But we got to understand that we are dealing with the spirit. And so we got to know how to bind that spirit of infirmity. And say, devil, I bind you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the blood of Jesus. And you got to be able to cast that spirit out of your body and tell that spirit you've got to go. And you've got to let that spirit know by his stripes, I'm healed. <laughs> So it says that um, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse number 13, he says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor that you can withstand in the evil day. Because we're living in the evil day right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he said, listen, having done all to stand, Stand therefore, uh -huh. holding your position yes. in God, standing on the faith and the word of God. And it says this, having your loins girt about with truth yes, sir. and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Now watch this. Uh, when he's saying having on your loins girt about with truth the word of God is truth yes, sir. and these are different uh, pieces that the soldiers would put on that represent uh, different um, types of, uh, of, of gear where you can fight the enemy but I want to make some things clear so he's talking about the loins girt about with truth which is the word the loins, whenever you deal with it, are normally our reproductive organs. The loins that are able to reproduce. That's the part that normally deals with covering up the lower extremity of the body. Yes. So that we need, it says, listen, we need the word of God. Because it is the word that is going to cause you to win this battle. Yes. 
And it says, uh, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate is symbolic of uh, integrity. Yes. Having integrity. So that means that when you are in a place of uh, spiritual warfare, when you are in a combative place, that means that you have the, you possess the power of God within your spirit to hold your soul at bay and to be able to move out of integrity and character because again what the enemy wants to do is to move you out of your position and move you out of your place because the enemy cannot handle you in the realm of the spirit but the enemy can deal with you in the flesh. And so this is why he will bring situations and circumstances in your life to get you frustrated. Because he understands and says, if I can get them aggravated enough, if I can get them frustrated enough, then I can move them out of position and then I will cause them to speak words of flesh and carnality. Because I can't deal with them in the Holy Ghost because of the glory and the anointing of God that is upon their life. I can't defeat them because God is on them. But if I can get some family members to frustrate them, if I can if I can get some members on their job with their work to frustrate them and aggravate them enough, then I can move them out of position. And then I can defeat them. And then I can cause a name to be given unto them. And to talk about that God that says, I knew it was nothing about them. I knew that they weren't saved. I knew that, that they didn't really have God. And so this is why we've got to take on the whole armor. So that you will be able to deal with your enemy in the spirit and by the spirit. Somebody say amen. Amen. Uh, and so he said having on that breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the gospel of peace you are, you are designed and created to be a peacemaker and, and, and everywhere you go that you are to bring peace into the atmosphere to where you go and, 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 and so he says, above all, take it on the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You know, when, when, when the soldiers would go into battle and they had their shields, woman of God, one of the things that they would do is they would anoint their shields. They would anoint them. So when, when they are in warfare, apostle, when the enemy would shoot fiery darts because they had fire on the ends of them, when they would shoot them and they would hit the shield because the shield was anointed, it would take the fire out of the weaponry. So it is important that as believers that we not only have faith and the shield of faith, but that it is anointed by God. That when the enemy would come in and to bring that disbelief to tell you that God is not moving and that God is not going to manifest his, pro his promises in your life, you will be able to have that anointed faith that says, devil, there is no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. That when God would send his word, that it will not return unto him void, but it will prosper in the thing who is in you. It'll prosper in you. It'll manifest and it'll come to fruition on the inside of you and this is why you got to know the word of God because David said that the word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my pathway one of the things that the enemy cannot stand is the word of God he wants to keep us ignorant and keep us in a place where we don't come into the fullness of knowing the word of God but when you can get that word down in your heart like David then you will always be able to win the battle. You'll be a conqueror in the spirit. Somebody say yes Lord. Yes, Lord. And it says and take on the helmet of salvation. Yes. Take on the helmet. 
In other words, the helmet is designed to protect the head. It is designed to protect the mind. But because, again, we got to have the mind of Christ. Yes. And we got to be able to put on, have that shield, that helmet to protect the very thoughts of God that come so that we're able to win this battle. And it says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. In other words, he said, listen, when you're holding in your hand is the sword. It's the, it, it, in that Bible is God's word. In that is, is what you need in order to win your everyday battles. And not only do you need that, but you need the rhema of God. You need the express word of God, of what God is speaking to you and what he is saying to you in this time and in this season of your life. Because again, it is the enemy that is after us. And he is out to destroy us and to take us out. But I am persuaded in the power of God that we are more than conquerors through Christ who love us. And I know that we serve a God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we are able to ask or think according to the power of God that lives on the inside of our spirit. And we know that we are a, a people that are mature in God, that we are sons in God, that understand spiritual warfare, that understand what we need in order to win this battle. And we understand that there is a determination that is on the inside of our spirit that is relentless and that will not quit, but that we will fight because the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, but it is the violent that take it by force. And I believe that in this room that there are a violent people, which means that there are a people that says, I will not sit by the wayside of life and allow the enemy to come in and to take the promises of God that he has blessed me. That I will not just sit by on the wayside of life and allow circumstances and situations to transpire in my life and I not do anything about it. I'm not going to sit and cry. I am not going to close down the, the shutters. I'm not going to get up under the bed and throw the covers over my head. I'm not going to get into a place of depression and discouragement. But there is a king on the inside of me that I'm going to let arise. There's a song that says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, because we, we're living in a time where God is looking for soldiers. They have a song that says, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. It says, if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. I, I find myself that are like those lepers that were on the side of the road. They said, listen, why sit we here and die when there is provision that has already been made? for us. And God is looking for people that are just like those lepers. That are not just going to sit by the wayside of life. But that are going to rise up in their spirit and say listen that there is more with us than it be with them. That is able to say greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. God is looking for a people that is ready to raise up and take your promises by force. Take your blessings by force. Which means I'm not asking for it. I'm not begging for it. But I'm stepping in on the enemy's camp. I'm stepping in on the enemy's territory. And I'm going to take back what he stole from him. Somebody clap your hands and give God some praise. I'm stepping in, my dear sister, and I'm getting ready to take it. I'm going to take back my healing because those are the promises of God. 
God. I'm not going to keep taking medicine. I'm not going to keep allowing the devil to, to prophesy to me through the doctors and saying that I won't live. But I'm going to take back my healing by the word of God because I understand that I'm fully dressed and I'm ready for warfare. I'm not just going to lay down, but I'm ready to fight. Look at your name and say, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to fight. Uh -huh. I, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to do battle. Amen. I, I'm, I'm ready to put the devil where he belongs. Uh, and the devil belongs under my feet. Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh, because we can let them up. Uh, and you let them move in your life. But the devil belongs uh, under your feet. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Because you have been anointed by God. Uh, amen. And so he belongs under your feet. Uh, God is looking for a people like David. Uh, you know when Goliath came to fight the children of Israel. And I had been troubling them for over 40 days. Uh, everybody else in the camp was scared and they were nervous. Uh, but one thing about David. Uh, David understood who he was. Uh, and he understood what he had. Uh, and woman of God when he came into the camp he said listen. Uh, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Uh, because David was looking through the spirit. He was looking through the prophetic realm of God. Uh, and while everybody was looking at a physical stature, David was looking in the spirit uh, and he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is coming to defy the camp of Israel? And the Bible said that when it was his time, amen, that when he got ready to go into the battle, the Bible says that he ran towards his enemy apostle. That means he wasn't nervous, uh, he wasn't scared, uh, he wasn't shaken, uh, but he ran uh, unto his enemy. He ran to that giant because he understood that he had the word of the Lord. And he began to prophesy to his enemy. And he began to tell him how he was going to cut his head off. And how he was going to feed it to the fowls of the air. You got to know how to prophesy to your enemy while you're in spiritual warfare. You got to let your enemy know that I'm getting ready to dismantle you. I'm getting ready to crush your power. I'm getting ready to overthrow you in the name of the Lord. You gotta let the devil know that you're not scared. That you don't have the spirit of fear but of power and love and of a sound mind. Somebody shout hallelujah. You gotta understand that when David got ready to run unto his giant, the Bible said that he had a pocket full of stones. He had five smooth stones because David understood that he wasn't only dealing with God Goliath, but Goliath had four other brothers, and he understood that if he was going to pick a fight through the anointing, just in case somebody else may want to raise up, I got a stone for him too. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you that amen, whatever your stone may be, in other words, everybody got something different in the kingdom. Yours may be praise. Somebody else's stone may be prayer. Somebody else's stone may be fasting, but whatever your weapon tree is. You got to know how to use your weapon. Somebody shout hallelujah. You got to know how to use what God has given you. Because I decree and declare under this atmosphere that you shall be victorious in this season. You shall be victorious in this hour. And that God shall fulfill every promise that he promised unto you. I'm here to tell you that you have not seen nothing yet. You haven't even scratched the surface of what God is getting ready to do for you. You haven't even seen it. The Bible said that I have not seen and neither have ear heard. It ain't even been conceived in your heart the things that God has in store for you. But you got to know that in order for you to get it, sometimes you may have to fight for it. Somebody shout hallelujah. When God promised the children of Israel the land they didn't know that it was going to be occupied by giants see some of you got some promises that God has promised you in your life but you didn't know that you really had to fight for it and just because God said it doesn't mean that you don't have to fight for it maybe you got to roll up your sleeve and you got to stick out your chest you got to spray up your shoulders and say I'm ready to fight I'm ready to fight for the blessing 
blessing. I'm ready to fight for the promise that God has given me. Somebody shout hallelujah. You got to let the devil know that you're not just going to sit by, but that you're going to mount up. That you're going to raise up in your faith. That you're going to raise up in your trust. That you're going to raise up in your belief. And that you're going to conquer the land. That you're going to break the power of the enemy. Because the enemy does not want you to stand up. But the enemy wants you to be depressed. But the enemy got news today from heaven. That there are a people that is full of joy. That is full of power. That is full of tutelus. That is willing to stand and stand in the spirit. And declare the word of the Lord. There is a people that is willing to stand and say that I shall not be moved. There is a people that is willing to stand that say I will not take down, that I will not back up, but I shall move forward in the kingdom because you possess power, you possess authority, you possess duty. Somebody clap your hands and give God praise. You possess power. You possess power. You possess dunamis. Hallelujah. And God is getting ready to do something great. But God is looking for people that's going to raise up in the spirit and move into the things of God like never before. My God. Because the enemy is really scared of you. The enemy is really scared of you. Because he knows there's a king on the inside of you. My God. That there is glory on the inside of you. My God. And God is getting ready to do something great. Everyone standing to your feet. I feel I want to pray for a couple of people if it's all right. Hallelujah. My God, woman of God, hallelujah, Jesus, my God, can I pray for you, is it okay, can I, can I pray for you, you can stay right there, there is a strong spirit of intercessory, God has called you to be an intercessor, mm -hmm. And a couple of things is going to happen to you today. Not only is there intercession, but I see a prophetic unction in your spirit. And, and, and there, is, there is such prayer that is on the inside of you. My God. Till I see you doing great things in the realm of the spirit where prayer is concerned. And God said, what he's getting ready to do today, God said, tell her I'm about to activate the anointing within her for prayer. God said, tell her I'm about to unlock some doors within her spirit in prayer. Because God is getting ready to broaden the horizon of your spirit. He's about to enlarge the borders of your territory in the spirit where intercession is concerned and prayer is concerned. And there is a mighty anointing on you, says God, of deliverance. Mighty deliverance. And there is a power in you that you have yet to see, says God, that is able to raise the dead. And I see God even using you in healing. I see you going in hospitals. I see you traveling out hospitals. And people that are sick, I see you going in and laying your hands on them. I see you releasing the prophetic word of the Lord over the life. And God raising them up. Because there's miracles within you, woman of God. And when I lay my hands on you, God is going to unlock that thing in your spirit. And, and, and the weight of God's glory is getting ready to come on you like never before. And I see God is going to use you in a diverse way in the realm of prayer. And, and I'm going to say some stuff that's probably going to blow your mind. But God told me to tell you that you're going to travel in the spirit in prayer. You're going to travel in the spirit in prayer. You're going to travel in the spirit because God is going to send you places in the realm of the spirit. 
like God, like never before. But I see strong healing, and I see strong deliverance. Strong healing, strong deliverance. Strong healing, strong deliverance. And many, I see many people, many people that don't even know that you have prayed for people and God have healed people because you're the kind of person that you pray in secret. You're not an individual that likes to be seen and noticed. You like to be in the background, in the back seat. But God wants you to know that he has seen it. But God is going to get ready to bring you to the forefront because there is a power on the inside of your spirit and God is getting ready to use you like never before. You ready, woman of God? I feel the anointing father in the name of Jesus. I thank you for this intercessor. I thank you for this intercessor. I thank you for this intercessor. I thank you for the prophetic anointing that is within our belly in the name of Jesus. And Father God, as I pray right now, that you are unlocking in her spirit, in the name of Jesus, greater anointing, that you are unlocking in her spirit, greater dimensions for prayer, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the anointing of deliverance that is upon our life. I thank you for healing that is upon our life. Mm. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for healing, the healing. I thank you for the anointing of healing, 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 healing. In the name of Jesus, healing. And Father, I thank you that you're getting ready to wake her up. I see you waking up, woman of God, in the times of 3 and 4 a.m. in the morning. I see, I see it in the spirit that I shot. I see God downloading things in your spirit. I see you writing in the spirit. God said he's getting ready to unveil mysteries. He's getting ready to unfold mysteries unto you. He's getting ready to speak some things and download into your spirit. God is getting ready to use you like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, glory to God. Greater prophetic unctions in the name of Jesus. God said he's getting ready to cause your mouth to be opened up. Many will not believe, but God said, know that I'm with you. Because God said, I'm about to show you some things. I'm about to show you. Show you, I'm about to show you. Huh? I'm about to show you. I'm about to show you some things. Glory to God. Think it not strange. Think it not strange if you don't fit in. Think it not strange if people don't believe you. Think it not strange because God is preparing you because a greater prophetic unction is getting ready to come out of you. Greater prophetic unction. Greater prophetic. Greater prophetic unction. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's receiving the moment of God. Just receiving. That's it. Uh, I feel it in my cool name. I feel it just receiving. There it is. There it is. I feel the Holy Ghost taking you in. I feel them taking your spirit in. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. That's it, woman of God. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it. Oh, yeah. That's it. Just stay right there. Just receive it. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it. Bring a prophetic. Bring a prophetic. Stir up the intercessor. The intercessor. The intercessor. The intercessor. The intercessor. The intercessor. Oh yeah, I feel it. I feel it. The intercessor. The intercessor is being stirred in your belly. Now it's being stirred. It's being stirred in your belly. It's being stirred in your belly. It's being stirred in your spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name, in the name. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Just let them work. Just let them work. Ooh. That's it. Just let them work. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Woman of God, can I pray for you? Hallelujah. Oh, my God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Stand right here, son. Stand right here, Father. Oh my God. As I look at you, I'm going to tell you what I see. I see entrepreneurship all over you. I see a plethora of businesses coming out of you. Plethora of businesses. More than one business. I 
hallelujah. I, I don't know if, if you've got something started now in business, but I see success all over you. I see success. What, what, what are you doing in business? What are you, what are you doing? But I, I see entrepreneurship this Witty ideas and inventions. It's getting ready to come. It's getting ready to come. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. I, yeah, yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, number one, God, I want to thank you for elevation and promotion in the spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, that God, even as I pray and even as I speak right now, God, there is an elevating of our spirit in you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, that she's able to perceive and to know. Father, I thank you for your hand of success that is upon this woman of God right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for the spirit of entrepreneurship that is upon her life. I give you glory, God, for witty ideas and inventions. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for an influx of finances. In the name of Jesus, that's not coming from a job, God, but it's coming from your spirit. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for streams of influence that will be released in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. And Father, I give you glory. I give you honor in the name of Jesus. And I hear woman of God, God said, get ready to write. Get ready to write. Get ready to write. Because he's about to show you. He's about to unveil some witty ideas and inventions uh, unto you, unto you, unto you. My God. And folk will think you crazy about these ideas. But you have been created for success. You have been created for prosperity in the name of Jesus. And Father, as I lay my hands upon this woman of God, Father, I give you glory and I give you honor right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that I shift her financial estate. In the mighty name of Jesus, I shift her position in the realm of the earth. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree the blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus. And Father, I decree a wind of refreshing. I decree a wind of refreshing. In the name of Jesus, God, that you would restore and that you would refresh. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, thank you. And I decree, God, that everywhere that she goes, God, that her feet, God, shall take her. That she will be successful. And that she will be prosperous. And I pray, God, that you will favor her on her job. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, I give you the glory. And I give you the honor right now. In the name of Jesus. So it is, God. And so it shall be. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Men of God, may I lay hands on you. Can I touch you? Is it okay? Father, in the name of Jesus. As I lay my hands on this man, Father, I pray that you would touch his body right now. From the crown of his head to the very sole of his feet. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray the fire of your anointing to move throughout his bones and in his joints and in his ligaments and in his tissues. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now that you will continue to move in him like never before. I pray for strength, God. In the name of Jesus, strengthen this mighty man of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, I apply the blood of Jesus upon this life. From the crown of his head, God, to the very soul of his feet. Father, I bind the hand of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I give you glory for healing. I give you glory right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, God. I pray, God, that you will continue to bless him, that you will continue to prosper him. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, man of God. You stand right here, just stand right here. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lift your hands, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Before I pray for you, man of God, is there anything that you desire from the Lord? You know? Father, 
in the name of Jesus. As I lay my hands on this man of God, I thank you right now. God, let the spirit of understanding be released upon this man of God. An understanding heart in the name of Jesus. An understanding heart. An understanding heart. An understanding heart. Mm. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that even while I have my hand upon him right now, Father, that is happening right now in the name of Jesus. It's not by power, it's not by might, but God is by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you for the release of your spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Mm. An understanding heart, Father, in the name of Jesus. A compassionate heart, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, I give you glory that while I have my hand upon him, God, that the therapeutic spirit of the living God to massage his heart in the name of Jesus. And Father, I give you glory. Father, I pray your hand of prosperity upon this mighty man of God as well. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you would do unprecedented miracles in his life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray that you will continue to anoint him. Anoint him in the name of Jesus. Let the oil of your anointing, the oil of your anointing, the oil of your anointing in the name of Jesus. Anoint him the more, anoint him the more, anoint him the more. In the name of Jesus, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, anoint him, God, anoint him. In the name of Jesus, anoint him. In the name of Jesus, anoint him, God, anoint him. In the name of Jesus, fresh oil and new wine. In the name of Jesus, I bind the hand of the enemy now. In the name of Jesus, that will raise up against this man of God. In the name of and I decree the anointing, the anointing of God to rest on you. In the name of Jesus. Father, and I thank you. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, and I give you glory. Father, and I give you honor. In the name of Jesus. And so it is. Thank you for giving it to him. Thank you for doing it, God. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. And I give you praise. And said, man of God. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's give him some praise. Is it okay if I get hands on you? Hallelujah. Hey. Lift your hands up. There's a Joshua anointed on your life. That God is going to use you. There's a modern day Joshua. There's a prophetic voice that lies on the inside of you for this generation that is coming. And I want you to know that God has handpicked and that he has chosen you to use you for his glory. There are strategies within. Joshua was a strategist. And there are strategies that God is going to give unto you to be able to overthrow the power of the enemy. God is going to use you greatly in salvation to save a generation of people. And think it not strange when people are just attracted to you because it's not you, but it's the anointing of Christ that he has placed on you. That people just going to be drawn to you and they're going to be drawn to you and they're going to be drawn to you. And in days to come, there's going to come a wisdom outside of your belly that is going to bless a people like never before. And I see the hand of authorship on your life. I see, I see a book. I see a book. I see you writing 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 a book. It's a un very unusual anointing that is on your life. You don't fit in with everybody. But there's an unusual anointing on your life. And I'm going to pray for you. Is that all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this mighty man of God. I thank you, God, for the spirit of Joshua that you are placing upon his life.
God, in the name of Jesus, that he will be a modern day strategist. I thank you, God, for the books that I see within the spirit that he will write. And he will write unto your glory. I thank you, God, for his spirit of submissiveness and humility. God, and the love that he has for you. There's such a humility, man of God, in your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, God, that you should use him greatly to prophesy with great utterance from the presence of God. And God, that you should use him all over this world. Man, you are going to travel. You're going to travel. And you're going to travel. And you're going to preach the word of God. You're going to prophesy the word of God. And God shall open many doors to you. Great doors. You shall be on platforms where many will never have an opportunity to stand upon. I even see you on television. God is going to open up doors for television. And I'm speaking into your future. I'm speaking down the line. So I'm speaking down the line. But I see television in your view. I see you traveling all over this nation. And there is a word in your belly. There is a story that you're going to tell and you're going to tell about Jesus you're going to tell about Jesus you're going to tell about Jesus and you're going to tell about Jesus my God oh God many dreams and visions of revelation 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 and I thank you Holy Ghost because you're, you're a seer man of God you see you see you see symbols dreams and visions shall be your portion in the name of Jesus Father and I give you glory and I give you honor use them like never before and Father I thank you and I bless you for it now in Jesus mighty name I pray and so it is in Jesus name somebody clap your hands for Jesus and clap your hands Glory to God, hallelujah. Can I lay hands on this little kid? I just pray for you. Hallelujah. I just want to say a prayer for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this man of God. And I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you will cover him under the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, that you will protect him in every way that he would go. In the name of Jesus, God, protect them in the city and in the fields. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, don't let the enemy take them out. Don't let the enemy destroy them. In the mighty name of Jesus, but God, come up under your blood right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, raise them up, God, and use them for your glory. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, God, that the enemy will not take him out. That he will not to be taken out prematurely, God, but that your blood will come and that your blood will rest. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, and I thank you and I give you the glory. And I give you the honor for it right now. In the supernatural name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Just let us say Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just lift our hands? Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this place. I thank you for this edifice that you have ordained from the foundations of the earth. Father, I speak blessings in this house. The blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Father, I speak the word of increase in this house in the name of Jesus. That there shall be souls that shall come in from the north and from the south. And from the east and from the west. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I prophesy to these chairs that they shall be filled. In the name of Jesus. Father, I prophesy that there will be paymasters. That there will be those that you have ordained to come and to bless this house. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare that this house will not lack nothing. But God, that 
this shall be a house of blessings where you shall overflow in this place in the mighty name of Jesus I thank you God for your spirit and your glory that rests in this place I thank you for the apostle of this house I thank you for the angel of this house in the mighty name of Jesus Father I pray that you will continue to bless this apostle in the name of Jesus, God, that you will continue to anoint this apostle. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you will continue to revelate this apostle. In the name of Jesus, uh, that you will continue to order his steps. The Bakosha. Madara Bako Shada. The Nebakosha. That you will continue to orchestrate his steps in the name of Jesus. Rondala Bako Shada in the Bosha. Father, I thank you for the miracles that is upon his life. The miracles, the miracles, the miracles, the miracles and the signs and the wonders. Oh, Father, I thank you for his sacrificial living. I thank you that it's not in vain in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to my portion de me quitala ba atza ye de boko toma. I thank you, God, that you came this day to encourage his heart, that you came to strengthen him in the name of Jesus, to let him know that his labor is not in vain. In the name of Jesus. Hey, God, that you came to shower your love upon them in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that his sacrificial living is not in vain. Oh, God, that's what I keep hearing in the spirit realm. Oh, my Oh, God, every prayer that you prayed says God is not in vain. Every fast that you have gone on is not in vain. God says says God I have heard you from the high place I have heard you from my throne says God and God says every petition God said every request that you have put up before me God said I shall grant it God said I'm releasing a wind I'm releasing my I'm releasing my breath upon it and God said I'm getting ready to answer I'm getting ready to answer I'm getting ready to answer I'm getting ready to answer. God said, I'm coming, apostle of the Lord. I'm coming. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I hear the Lord say, tell you that I'm getting ready to sit help from the sanctuary. Glory to God. God said, I'm getting ready to sit help from the sanctuary. I'm getting ready to send help. I'm getting ready to send help. Man of God, I'm sending. I'm sending help. I'm sending help. I'm sending help. I'm sending help to help you with this burden. I'm sending help to help you with the burden. I'm sending help to help you with the burden that I placed upon your shoulders, that I placed upon your heart. I'm